hello guys and welcome back to my youtube channel if you're new to my channel hello and welcome to my channel my name is summer uh, in this video i want to share with you guys this post that i've seen some of you may have seen it as well on facebook it says first letter of demand so this is only the first one so maybe they'll be second or third i don't know so and it's fresh enough like and it says 30th of october 2020 the pastors the letter is to the pastors and dicks sorry the letter is to the pastors and dickens um of um, um revival mission church lower kabete kenya reference number dkk slash zero zero three slash 2020 and dear sir refund of offerings contributed from 1998 to 2017 i hereby demand reimbursement of all the monies i contributed to the church while i was a member from the year 1997 to 2018 this is approximately 58,000 cash um it's not a currency i'm familiar with but it says cash from my estimated <laughs> From my estimated calculation, I confirmed that the contributions were not voluntary. <laughs> okay. I confirmed that the contributions were not voluntary and blame this on undue on influence, duress, and intimidation. If you do, then he put in red in bracket, he says, if you do not give offering, you will go to hell. Kindly deposit the amount in my in my bank account and close with this letter and not later than 31st of November 2020. Failure to pay the stipulated amount before the said date shall prompt legal proceedings. Yours sincerely, Dishon and uh, Kinyaju Kinutia. I saw that post and uh, but I actually got thinking about it. I was thinking to myself, can someone actually sue a church? for his money back, can, uh, his offering back, or even tithe back. And I started thinking to myself, if he had a very good lawyer, can he actually do it? What I'm asking this is, you see, every day people are waking up and realizing there was a time people didn't really bother to read their Bibles. Let's be honest. They didn't bother to study their Bibles. They just go whatever. There was a time, let me put it, let me put it this way. There was a time people trusted pastors a lot. They believed every single word that came out of their mouths. There was a time. People saw them as holy representatives of God on earth. And people never expected anything that they say to be untrue, incorrect, you know, unbiblical. And then you come to the idea of tithe paying and, uh, you know, giving offering in the church and everything. Where there's a problem is if a preacher begins to give you conditions, you don't give offering or you don't pay tithe, you're going to suffer, you're going to this, and they start telling you things that are not even in the Bible. You know, then, then that is deception. That is deception. Let's be honest. Because, you see, this is how it starts. The world is changing and people are beginning to know more. And I think social media has played a very big role in exposing a lot of things that people believed in the past. There was a time when all people knew was what their pastor said. But now, because of social media, there is so much available to people. So, so much truth available to people. Just by social media, people are beginning to say, okay, no, what our pastor says is actually not according to the word of God. You know, and people are beginning to know that their pastors are not necessarily these perfect human beings they thought they were. They're just human beings like you and I. And there's nothing wrong in a pastor asking for people to give offering towards the church or donate. And stuff. There's nothing. They can ask, ask people to donate. Where there's a problem is when they begin to put conditions. If you don't do this, if you don't do that, or make it compulsory that people must give. Or they say, they say, sow seed so that you can be prosperous. Then the question is, those that have no money to pay to sow seeds going to what are you saying to those people oh sow this seed so that uh, sowing this seed you're sowing this seed for your generations so what's going to happen to the generation of those that have no seed to sow and th these things are not biblical i have made videos where i talked about there are so-called preachers who have begun to sell god's blessings you know, when they say you give this so that you give this amount, you know, people that are going to donate 100, 100,000, 50, 50,000. And then the, the, the prayer point for different level of giving is different. Those that contribute 1 million, they are the ones that are 
like the top notch prayer point. The pastors will then give pray do the biggest prayer for those ones, and then those ones that give maybe fifty thousand, their own prayers will be less, and then they keep reducing. That is not in the Bible. It's not biblical. The blessings of God are free of charge. We are, you're not paying God to bless you. you are, who, do you know who God is? Who can you pay God for God's blessings? You can't pay God for you for God's blessings. You know, even when Jesus talked about the 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 the, the widow that gave her widow's might, Jesus didn't say, "Oh, she's her money. Her money is going to get doubled, or she's going to get more." You know, Jesus didn't say that. The Bible says in Matthew six twenty six, "Look at the birds of the air; they do not sow or reap." Or store away in bands, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much valuable than they? God will look after His children. This is what the Bible is saying. You know, the, before I actually forget, I wanted to. I, part of me was wondering: Can someone actually sue a church and say, you know, they deceived me? And I was thinking about it. If this person had the good lawyer, can they? I'm just thinking, like thinking out loud now, like. Because if, for example, we see there are different professions in the world. If a doctor tells you, you know, you need to take your womb out because, you know, you have this health problem, blah, blah, blah. You know, if you don't take your womb out, you could die from da, 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 da. And the person ended up doing it. And then they later found out that that, that doctor lied. That doctor can be sued because that patient made that decision according to the, the lie that, this, that the doctor told them. You get my point. If, if a builder tells you, okay, you know, let's construct it this way because this is the best, da, 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 da. And then ends up being that the construction was so bad and the house, let's say, collapsed in like, you know, whatever time. In a civilized society, you can sue the construction company or the builder or whatever. So now I started thinking if different professions can be sued. I've just, honestly, I'm just thinking out loud. Those of you that are maybe in the legal pro profession, you can chip in as well and let us know what you think. So if somebody says, well, he's a pastor, it's his job to, you know, tell us the truth from the Bible. And he told me that, you know, if I don't give offerings or if I don't pay tithe, I'm going to go to hell. I believed him, but I found out he was lying. So I didn't give him that money willingly. I gave it to him because of the lie he told. I'm just, although you have to be able to prove that that pastor told you that lie. But, but let's think about it. What if there was a video of the pastor where he told the lie that you have to give offering to make heaven? Can somebody actually sue a church for their money back? Uh, that's another thing I've been wondering about. So for those of you that are in that profession, go ahead and, uh, you know, educate us on stuff like that. I know this would be very unusual kind of a court case, but like <laughs> the world is changing and people are becoming very brave, confident, you know, fearless when it comes to even the issues of the church. And this is actually a lesson. It's actually a lesson for a lot of preachers. The world is changing. People are beginning to be more and more knowledgeable. And there is so much you cannot just throw over to the people and they just take it. People are changing. And I said it, and I was saying it in one of my last, in one of my videos, I said, if preachers stick with the Bible, they will not go wrong. But that's the problem. A lot of them are not sticking with the Bible anymore. A lot of things are being twisted and turned upside down. But anyways, I'm going to, I don't want this video to be too long. I read, I saw that and I wanted to share it. But let me read something to you guys about, you know, this idea of thinking you can buy your way to heaven. Or give this tithe or whatever, a uh, big offering, whatever, you go to heaven. I read, I'll end with this Bible verse. And it's Matthew 25 um, from verse 31. To 46 the bible says in 31 when the son of man comes in his glory and all the angels with him he will sit on the glorious on his glorious throne all the angels will be gathered before him and he will separate one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goat he will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left then the king will say to, to those on his right come you are blessed by my father Take your inheritance, the kingdom, prepared for you since the creation of the world. In 35, it says, for I, for I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will say to him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and, and feed you? Or thirsty and gave you something to drink. In 38, the Bible says, When did we see you a stranger and invite you in? Or needing clothes and clothe you? 
When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did to the one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you are cursed into the internal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison and you did not look after me. They all will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes, his or sick or in hospital and did not help you? He will reply, truly I tell you this, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. In 46, the Bible says, then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. This is the Bible talking about criteria, basically talking about criteria of making heaven. And nothing there said anything about bringing money to the church and paying tithe and offering. Or giving your money to your pastor that is already very rich or giving giving more and more buying presents and gifts and everything you know to your pastor that is already very rich he's talking about helping those in need helping those in need tithe and offering will not take anybody to heaven the bible didn't say so do not allow anyone to deceive you and with that i'm gonna say thank you for watching until the next time guys bye bye bye